Welcome to this Tutor to You Sociology topic video looking at theories of crime and deviance, focusing on the work of John Braithwaite. Braithwaite examines crime from an interactionist perspective, and as with many other interactionists, examines the impact of labelling and the stigmatisation of both criminal behaviour and those committing the acts themselves. He used the term shaming to describe the process of labelling, both of the act and the person carrying out the act, and focused on social reactions to both the action and the individual. Braithwaite's work is more concerned with the reactions to crime than the causes, yet has different applications in terms of social control and the punishment of crimes, and we'll look at some of those in this video. Braithwaite used the term shaming to refer to the labelling of both the act and the actor, that is, the person committing the crime and found that there were differences in the response to the individual if only the act was seen as criminal or deviant. Braithwaite, like others before him, suggested that labelling or shaming of the individual committing the act is likely to lead to further deviance or reoffending. He suggested that not only is an individual punished for the act, but also for committing the act, that is, being criminal or deviant. Braithwaite suggested there were two ways in which labelling or shaming is applied to crime and deviance, and that these have different effects. He suggested that there existed disintegrative shaming and reintegrative shaming, and we'll look at each of those in more detail. Disintegrative shaming is often most associated with traditional interactionist ideas of the individual being labelled twice, once for the act and a second label being applied to the individual as a form of master status. For example, if somebody steals, the act of theft is labelled, as is the actor who is labelled as a thief. This leads to mistrust of those individuals and has the potential to isolate them from society. As a consequence, this could lead to further criminality and thus an increase in overall crime. However, Braithwaite suggested a more positive approach to crime, one that could reduce the shaming of the individual. And that was reintegrative shaming. As the name suggests, the purpose of this is to reintegrate the individual into society rather than lead to isolation. In this form of shaming, the crime is labelled as deviant, but the individual is assumed to have made a mistake in committing the act and worthy of rehabilitation. For example, when an individual steals something, it is viewed as an error of judgment rather than a character flaw. This has potential for individuals to be reintegrated into society once they have made amends for their actions and shown remorse. And Braithwaite's approach has some practical applications for the punishment of crime. The process of restorative justice is based upon the principles of reintegrative shaming. Instead of utilising punishment as a form of incarceration from society, the criminal is encouraged to actively make amends for their acts. Now this could be through meeting with their victims or their victims' families to see the impact of their actions. It could be making reparations to their victims or to the community, undertaking counselling or committing to work-based learning so they may be reintroduced to society as rehabilitated and a good person. An increased practice of restorative justice is mediation of the victim and the victim's families and the offender. The purpose of this is to demonstrate remorse for their actions understand the consequences of what they have done and aid the victim's recovery from the crime. It has been found in communities and societies where this process has been applied that the rate of reoffending has diminished, having an overall reduction on levels of crime. However, critics of Braithwaite's approach suggest that reintegrative shaming does not recognise the causes of crime, rather focuses on how to prevent the individual from committing crime again. Whilst it has a purpose in rehabilitating offenders, it does little to stop crime from occurring in the first place. Secondly, it can be seen as influential in promoting alternatives to imprisonment, where low-level offenders may be exposed to more seasoned criminals and develop contacts of criminal networks. This helps to reduce recidivism rate, as it gives the individual options for their future, rather than assigning them a criminal master status. However, many critics, particularly those on the right of the political spectrum, state that reintegrative shaming is less of a deterrent against criminal behaviour and that imprisonment and harsh sentencing are preferable to protect society from dangerous criminals. 
That concludes this Tutor to You sociology topic video looking at theories of crime and deviance, focusing on the work of John Braithwaite. Thanks for watching.